<laughs> I wanted to record not only a welcome for video.org, but I wanted to take the time to uh, explain things in an intimate way, so that way you would know from the horse's mouth exactly what I meant when sometimes I'm writing things that maybe you didn't understand. So what I do is I give out these little video warnings videos that are more of like tips or insights, maybe explanations or some in-depth analysis of some type of perspective that you hadn't thought of that maybe you might react to. So I call them warnings in order to give you an idea of where I'm coming from so that you might understand where you're going with what you're hearing or seeing. On video.org, lots of times as I've experienced throughout my life, depending upon who I was writing for, and I am a writer, I've, I've written books, I've written chaps, books, novellas, all kinds of things, and I've written for a living. The perspective that you have when you're writing is that you have to know who your audience is because most professional writers can write directly towards their audience and cause them to understand the information they're relating in some way. And so writers develop their craft in order to write to the person that they want to have the information given to or inspire or cause to come to a conclusion, especially if it's for educational purposes, to come to a conclusion through the reading of the words and the type of style that they're using in order to relate that information. Because I'm also a Christian, as a Christian writer at different times, I've had to be very careful about what I can do and what I should not do. Because a lot of people don't read the words themselves as they are written. They read what they think they understand because they're led along by emotion. And sometimes words can cause those emotions to be stirred where they don't necessarily have the right information that was supposed to be related. And I find this true, especially you know in America with uh, a lot of American audiences, because when you're writing in general terms to a massive public, then you can't write specifically to the audience in the way that they might understand. For instance, if I had the time, I could sit down and write to children and they would understand. I could write to adults the same thing that I write to children, really and make it simple and use you know short words. Or I can articulate in the identification of the integral specificity of theological terms in such a way that I can prove that my homiletic and my hermeneutic is not only accurate, but that it's differentiation between its systematic theology and the type of theology that I'm using is coordinated according to the Holy Spirit and the direction that God has given me in my life. So that's confusing enough, <laughs> just saying it. But my point is, the simplicity of what God wants to do is the reality of why I issue this warning. Don't misread words that I write, because I may be inspired at the moment to direct them towards a person, but they're, or towards an issue, but they're not directed towards a person. The person, I like to tell people, look, if you don't understand my heart, where I'm coming from, watch one of these videos. See what I'm all about. See what my personal relationship with Jesus is all about. Then tell me what I'm saying as opposed to what you think you're reading whenever you read something that I've written. Lots of times people misread the words that I've given. And so I try to tell them and warn them ahead of time, look, go watch a video. And that's why I'm recording this warning. Go watch a video. If you watch a video, you'll better understand me and understand the Holy Spirit in me as he relates to you what he wants you to know about me. And so in this warning, that's all I'm really trying to say is that don't mistake words that are written without really doing a little more in-depth analysis. Most of the time, I tell people, look, if you really want to have a discussion, then come over to my house. You know, we'll sit down and talk for three days. And I've done it. A friend of mine one time um, was dropped off at my house out in, uh, I was living in Oregon at the time, and he was dropped off at uh, Spring Creek where I was working. And he came in on a Friday. We stayed up from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
until Monday when he left and he jumped on a plane and went back to New York. He's a New York Jew and we just did nothing but relate the Bible from morning, noon, and night because we were just really wanting to make sure that we knew and understand and comprehended each other where we were coming from. And we started from Genesis, we went all the way to Revelation and back again and inside and outside and all around. And You know, it's kind of like written scrolls that were written on the outside and they were written on the inside and you open them up and you know, it's kind of like got meaning on the inside but it's also got meaning on the outside because they're written and they're sealed and they're signed, you know, and Jesus is there and he's in the midst of them. He's the only one that can open up the scrolls and, you know, it's titled E to the Earth. So it's kind of interesting what's written on them and then as well as the seals and what they entail and kind of going on and on like that. So, if you want to know, you can ask. But most of the time, in my early days as a Christian, I used to say, do you really want to know? Because most people don't want to know. I know what I believe in. I know what I have learned over the years, and I have no problem demonstrating that truth of what I've discovered or uncovered through my personal relationship with Jesus, as well as his direction in leading me to the wisdom that I needed according to his direction of what I'm supposed to be in the Word of God, which for me was to be able to give to every man an answer for the hope that lies within me about any subject whatsoever. So some people at times might find that quote unquote opinionated, but my object lesson is such that I'll point you to the Word of God and how the Word of God reads, relates, and you use is up to you. I know what the facts are. The point is, they're written in the Word. And so, when you study them long enough in any topic form that you choose, you'll come to the right conclusion if you let God lead you. If you don't, then you'll come to this conclusion where you're just barking at each other. Because the reality is, most things that people do, whenever they're arguing, especially in America, is just barking. They bark at each other. They don't try to come to a conclusion like I do where I can take what's said on both sides of an issue and prove what God's point of view is to make both right and both wrong. And that's the point of what Jesus did lots of times in his life. And so that's why I like to record video warnings to maybe give an insight into really what you might not understand because it will happen that somewhere along the line, maybe not in a video boat, maybe they will in a video boat. Some things, yeah, maybe you know about guns and things like that. But at some point in time, I am more than persuaded. As a matter of fact, I'll say I am confident, say more than persuaded, confident, that I will offend you. And it's meant to be by God. Because it's not meant that we should not have conversations or offenses. It's meant that we should have those directions that cause us to not see eye to eye, that we might inspire each other to come to a conclusion that might incorporate more than we ever thought we could imagine. That's where I come into existence and to being if you choose to spend the time, walk through the time, and examine whatever it is that you may be hanging on to with, you know, fingernails of your faith, thinking that you've got to hold on to that rather than look at it and say, hey, this is what the Bible says, what are you going to do about it? You know, it's like, hey, it's the way it goes, you know, I mean, it's written there for a purpose for us to understand and to comprehend. And so, that's why I issue this warning, you know, at videobo.org because there are lots of things that I've gotten into. I enjoy finding the controversial and making it comfortable for dissertation or for sharing Jesus in the midst of it. Because Jesus never was afraid to comment on any subject. And I think that's what we as Christians are supposed to have. The answer for everything. The answer to anything and every issue that comes up in life. We should be the ones that are looked to for the answer as well as being the light of the world and the salt that has not lost its savor. So, my warning in looking at videobo.org is that my purpose is one, my purpose is multiples, mostly to you know inspire you to find Jesus and to know him in a personal, intimate way. But my purpose in the way I do things is to make you think, to cause you to think. If you think about it, if you really choose to think, you'll come up with something 
unique and personal from this site that will give you insight into other things in your life, in your relationships, in your knowledge of God, in your knowledge of the Word, in your personal satisfaction with what you're doing today, as well as some practical way to deal with those things we call the great issues of life. Because God wants us for eternity. He doesn't want us on a temporary, you know, let's one-upmanship kind of thing. He wants to prepare us for the kingdom of heaven that's going to last from ages to 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 ages in an unending sequence of events that's called ages so that we're always learning. And the way we learn the reality is demonstrated by my posse right here. The three of us together, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one person with the other person with Jesus in the midst, where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst. The triunity of the aspect of the Godhead that we've been given is such that there's a reality of how God operates demonstrated in it. And that's why I wanted to issue a warning that if you're only looking at just some simple way of dealing with your life, then stick with the videos and, and you know, like whatever topic or interest that you have in video.org. But if you get into areas where you feel like you're kind of like confronted or you're feeling a little frustrated, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to seek. Don't be afraid to check out some of these warning videos or even contact me personally. I have no objection whatsoever to write back, to record back, to even create a video if you wanted to. We'd sit here and discuss it. I don't do, and this is just a warning, I don't do talk radios because I don't believe in talk radio. It's sensationalism crammed into a small, minute format. Should someday the Lord say, Michael, go to this one, I would go, of course. But it's the Lord that leads me, not my own personal preferences. My personal preferences is to avoid talk radio. I don't do normally going out to churches and giving lectures and speeches because they're always trying to pay you for it. And I don't do money. So the fact that I have spoken in churches at times simply means that if you ask me, I'll pray about it. God says go, then I'll come. Maybe if I can afford it, I'll show up. <laughs> if I can't afford it, I'll tell you. You know, hey, look, I'm a poor person. You know, I'll, I'll share you know, the word of God, but you can't ask for money. You know, and you can't take you know, offerings or some you know sneaky way of trying to provide. You know, because I've already worked in those kinds of ministries. You know, I know what they do. I know how it operates. And when I say no, no means no. And when I say we are freely received, freely give, it means freely received, freely give. So all of these warnings take to heart. I really do mean what I say, and I say what I mean. I'm not trying to be, you know, like so spiritual or so carnal, you know, that I'm no earthly good. I'm just trying to be so heavenly minded that I'm all earthly good. I've got lots of cliches that I throw now because they don't fit their humanism personified. But I do have cliches that are very scriptural. And I like to use cliches as well as posses and things like this to demonstrate the fact that God wants us to know Him. God is choosing to make every means possible in any way, shape, or form to reveal Himself to you. He has demonstrated that over and over again throughout creation as well as throughout society. And whether you find it in you know, me wearing a suit, you know, or a coat and a, you know, nice shirt, more or less, and a hat. Or whether I take my hat off and show how messy my hair is, or some days I shave like I'm getting ready to do, and I come out with a different hat, or come out with my my Hawaiian shirts, or, you know, even shirtless, maybe, you know, kind of enjoying the sunshine. It's just because God wants to relate to you in a way that you'll understand Him. Not that I need to put on some act or be phony. Because I never do. What you see on videvo.org is what you get. I am as I am. There's no pretense. There's no off well. There's offensive things in some ways because it will cause you to think. So in those times when it's causing you to think, then all you need to do is to ponder, pray, consider, and read. 
because once you read the Word of God and consider and ponder it, then it's up to the Holy Spirit to either cause you to come into the same place that you'll understand it, or maybe He'll want you to go on into a different direction. But use the sight as you choose with God to use. Don't be limiting yourself, or don't be obsessive with yourself. Don't be obsessed with the sight. Don't try to make it bigger than it is, or less than what it is. It's simply God using some poor slob who's sharing something that God has done in his life with you. And it could have been, to pardon my expression that I always say to anyone that's in the ministry, you know, especially pastors or theologians or doctors of theology, God could have used a jackass if he wanted to, and he usually does. And that's what he did with Balaam's mule. And if he could use me, then he can use you to talk to and relate the Word of God in an intimate and personal way so that people can know Jesus. So in this warning, that's what we're trying to say about Vidigal.org. We're trying to say, don't get misled by your emotions, but rather get fed by the Word of God. Get into discovering more by asking questions, by trying to get deeper than the surface reactions you might have. Any man can cause an action to occur. But when you react, usually you're not causing an action to occur. You're being led by something that causes you to react. So you may not have initiated that action. And sad to say, most reactions are not godly. So consider those things and think on them before you overreact or underreact, before you act in any way. Think is the word. I like to use that a lot on this site. You're going to find, if I really get a chance to develop the site as much as I want to, the word think a lot, you know, or think on these things, or ponder, or consider. The word in Hebrew is ra'a, which was to behold, consider, and see. That means you have to do more than just read it or think it. You have to really take it in and kind of chew on it for a while. Most of what I did when I studied was for years of study on sometimes just some of the things that I just put in the back of my mind and God would send pieces of it through the, throughout the year or throughout the day or throughout the months or whatever it may be. And I would remember. I'd know, oh, that, that fits with that. Oh yeah, okay, you know, kind of file it. And my brain was compartmentalized according to the Word of God in that way. And so I've always enjoyed that part of how God teaches. And the thing I wanted to warn you about in doing that is that don't think that the surface things that you may have just said, well, he thinks this, or he's this, or he's like a charismatic, or he's this, or he's a, you know, born in a Christian, or whatever. Don't think that labeling fits people. Individuality is the byline of this ministry of Vidivo.org. And we honestly believe with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength that you are a unique and distinctive human being that God has created in his own image. And he's going to relate to you like he relates to no one else in the universe. And so we call it the one. If it's not done for the one, then it's not done for anyone. But if it's done for the one, then it's done for everyone. And that's the way we relate this ministry to. It's for everyone. But we focus in on the one. The one person that's in front of us. You. Right now.